So uh, the person that uh, our guest today is uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Kende Adikoya, a driven mechanical engineer with experience in telecommunication, maintainers, and automobile services and maintainers. Also the founder of FAMTS Auto Shops offer, offers a wide range of services ranging from automobile diagnosis, mechanical and electrical repairs, air condition repairs, and panel beating, painting, and training. So, uh, Ms. Adekoya, over to you. Um, hi, everyone. Are you there? Good evening. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Good evening. Yes, I can hear you. Good evening. Um, so, we're having a short presentation on um, vehicle maintenance and service. Um, Mr. Biola, I think you're supposed to share my presentation. Are you going to do that for me? Yeah, I will. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm sure so everyone can see it now. Can you see it now? Okay, yeah. So just let so, me know. Just say next, then I, I can, can see, see it. it. Who else can see it? Okay, so since you can see it, so you can start. Okay, um, so you can move to the next slide. Okay. Okay, so vehicle maintenance. So we know that there are so many vehicles on the road. And as a responsible driver, uh, we should make sure our car is running in good conditions. Um, there are many things we can do to keep our cars in good conditions. Um, and the other things we need to leave to our the technicians, the mechanics, um, the wire, the auto electrical guys to maintain for us. Um, next slide. Um, so I have a list of things you can do yourself that you don't need a technician to do for you to maintain your car. You can check your tire pressure yourself, rotate your tires yourself, check your engine oil level and the viscosity of your engine oil to know whether it's due for oil change or not. Um, check all the fluids in your car, ranging from the brake fluid, the power steering fluid, the transmission, oil, um, the coolant in the car. You can also replace your air filters. So the engine air filter, also the air condition air filter of the car. You can change your flat tires, jump start your car where you need to. If you have a flat, um, a low, um, so if your battery runs low, you can jump start and do it well. Then monitor your dashboard on the car. So have an idea of the warning signs on your dashboard. Um, you can move to the next slide, Mr. Biola. Okay, um, so we're starting from tire pressure. Um, so to take your tire pressure, you need just to unscrew the, the valve, um, the valve cover, and get your. So you should have. I, I think every car owner, there are basic um, things you should have in your car. You should have a tire gauge. Um, some cars now come with tire pump that you could just connect to the. Um, DC adapter in your car and um, inflate your tires. Um, now with new, so there are ways to check your tire pressure. So I think you should check your tire pressure every week or rather every month to make sure that your tires are have the right pressure in them. Um, and over inflated tire has a bad effect on your tire. A deflated um, tire also has the has bad effect on your tire. To keep your tire running for a long time you need to put the right tire pressure in your cars with some newer uh, with newer model of vehicles um, they have um, tire monitor in them so it will be display on screen when your tire is low from the picture below you could see that um on the front left tire you have 46 the back um left you have 45 um Front right, you have 50. Back right, you have 50. So um, for this particular car, the required um, PSI is 50 PSI. Now, because the ones on the right side are low, it would alert the driver to inflate the tires. 
if your car doesn't have this so you need to check it manually just go to the valves and check your tire pressure and put the appropriate tire pressure next slide so with um so for every uh vehicle man manufacturer there's a recommended tire pressure for each cars and each tire so mostly it's always on the plate by the driver side door frame you find so i just so i showed an example of um plates that shows you the tire pressure for your car you will find this on most cars by the driver's door by, by the frame you find the specified psi for each car then um how to know the um, um the right amount of uh pressure that needs to go into your tires even on the tires it's marked there so to know your tire size uh the rim size and all of that so it's on this picture um so 198 here can you so 198 here is the width of the tire 55 is the height of the tire uh, um 16 here is the rim size 87 it shows the um the speed for this so we have all of this then the other thing on your tire you have the inside so for a tire there say so, um there's always the, di the direction you are you're supposed to put it so before your uh, for organizer fixes your car you should just check um the part of the tire that that is supposed to be inside the rim the part that is outside is always written on the tire all of that when you install your tire appropriately it will last for a longer time and when you put in your right pressure a lot of organizers when you take your cards to them to just inflate that they just have the impression that you are, you, are, you are supposed to put 40 psi or 50 psi why the car is supposed to run on maybe 32 35 but um it's advisable to put the right tire pressure the right tire pressure like inflate your tire to the right tire pressure so that it can last longer next slide um while i'm doing this if you have a question you can write it down so at the end of um, the presentation you ask any question and i'll answer so um for tire tire rotation um i don't think we do that a lot in nigeria so to make your tire last long like we are we are we're supposed to rotate the tires and there are different ways to do that it's recommended that you rotate your tire every eight thousand kilometers after you get the tire so you move so for an all wheel drive for all vehicles you just um, interchange from back to front on each side so the one on the front left moving to the back left and the one on the back left moving to the front left same thing or you would cross section it as the one on the front right move it to the back left either way it's already indicated in the slide next one next slide mr biola okay then uh checking of engine oil uh, it's very easy to check your engine all you need to do you open your bonnet you find the um oil dipstick uh, so you know you remove it clean it put it back to check the oil level and all that and with new one models um you can even check it on your dashboard you just um, from the dash from the instrument from the instrument cluster you can find out the level of your oil and if the oil is low it's supposed to give you a warning light on the dashboard and tell you that oil is low next slide now on this slide it's showing you with the dipstick um to know when to change your oil um so i think the one on the bottom so 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 we are so we are starting from the first one um you can see it's below so there are two dots oh thank you for this so there are two dots the one below the second dot you can see the color is very dark and very low so you need to change your oil um when your oil is good it's a bit like lighter when it's low you top up then for so it's showing when you so when so when you gauge your engine oil when the engine is cold and when it's running um the difference in level changes a little bit then uh, for servicing of our engine um it's recommended that you change your oil every five thousand miles or three months but in lagos in nigeria i would recommend you follow three months because it's going to take a lot of driving for you to achieve five five thousand and because we spend most of our time in traffic and when you are in traffic your engine is running but your speedometer is not reading 
So I think it's more advisable and it will be better for the engine to service every three months. Because if you if you stick to servicing every 5,000 kilometers, it might take six months, it might take eight months before you achieve 5,000. And before that period of time, before that time lapses, the engine oil would have degraded because we spend a lot of time in traffic. And while you're in traffic, you're running your engine, but the speedometer is not reading. So I think the more you service your engine, the better for the car. Your car will last longer and all of that. Okay, can you move to the next slide? Um, so um, another thing to check are your brakes. Also, your brakes is one of the most important uh, thing in your car. Um, so usually you have people driving um, cars when the brake warning light is on. Um, so there are so, so some reasons why your brake warning light might, might come on. One, once your brake fluid is low, your brake warning light to come on. So um, reasons why your brake fluid could get low, probably there, there's a leakage somewhere. If there is no, no leakage anywhere. Now, because the brake system is a closed system, what I mean by closed system, um, the, the fluid runs in a closed system. So at any point when your brake, brake oil is low, it's, it, it is very, very likely that your brake parts are already low because uh, once the brake part is low, it, it, it creates more allowance for the fluid to rust. So then the fluid will get low on your tank in the reservoir. So anytime you notice that your brake, that the brake fluid in your reservoir is getting low, you check your brake parts, to look that, whether they are low. Another reason why your brake warning light will come on is when the um, brake lamps are full faulty. It will come on or when your brake lining and brake pad is low, it will come on. Can you move to the next slide, please? The next thing, one of the major problems in Nigeria, I don't know why it's in. So yesterday I was in the traffic on Third Milan Bridge and I just noticed that a lot of cars were breaking down. And it was majorly Sienna's. Like I could like I could count 10 Sienna's that actually parked by the side of the road because of overheating and i think the problem is their cooling system probably the um radiator they are using it's um is a single cell and when it's a single cell because of our hot weather it creates more um heat and the cooling is not enough for the particular car so while you're driving as a res as a res responsible driver your, your eyes should actually be on your instrument cluster you should monitor your temperature your oil pressure and all of that so um paraventure if you at some point you experience overheating what should you do you try and park um or before that you could um turn on your eater the car eater increase the fan speed so it would reduce the heat in the engine so it's because it's the coolant in the engine that actually supplies it for the heater in your car so that way um it will the the temperature is supposed to be drop it's supposed to drop and if it doesn't drop you should park by your roadside um open your bonnet and allow the engine to cool between 30 to one hour check once the one once the engine has cooled you can open your radiator um check your water level check your coolant level if your coolant level is is low you need to top up another thing to check is if there's any leakage in coolant or also you can check your fan. That's the engine fan if it's working properly. Um, if all of these are fine, you could just check your, make sure that your coolant is topped up and can continue your journey. If not, you probably have to call your mechanic to check your car. Um, next slide. Okay, um, so how to identify um, leakage on the floor? A lot of times when you park, you see different spots. You might just notice different spots of on your car. One, if 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 you notice a oil that is black and a little bit thicker, that's your engine oil. A reddish slash brownish um, color in oil. It's your transmission oil. Then reddish brownish. It's lighter and it's lighter. That could be your power steering fluid. Then brake, it's clear brown, a little bit slick, um, slippery when you touch it on the floor. Then coolant comes in very in various colors. So I, I usually advise my clients to put coolants in their radiator. 
So if there's any leakage, you would know on time on like water. When water drops, it will evaporate in no time. But when it's coolant and it's colored, if there's leakage anywhere, you will notice um, the color, the stain of the coolant on wherever it's leaking. So it's an easy way to actually detect any coolant leakage in your vehicle. Next slide. Um, another thing we can do on our own is to check our air filter. A lot of times people actually forget about their AC filter. Um, so the picture below is the old and dirty picture of one AM AC filter actually checked and the newer one. Once your AC, once you notice that your um, AC is not cooling like before, the first thing you need to just check your um, AC filter. The AC filter is usually behind the glove com 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 the glove com com compartment by the passengers in, in front of the purpose passenger seat in front. That the, the glove can you just need to pop it out. You find the air filter there. Usually in most cars, that's where the air filter is. Then also the air the air filter, the engine air filter. A lot of times when your engine is not running well, the air filter is one of the problems. So the filter it filters the air that goes into the combustion chamber. You know we all know this from our classes in school. Com combustion um, fuel and air mixture. So the air that goes into the engine comes in through the air filter box channel so this filter is supposed to filter the air that goes into the engine it's recommended that that you change your air filters every 20 20 000 kilometers that's every four service or you can even do so but uh, so it depends so this re this recommendation is for an environment where everything is working fine but if you are living in a very dusty area you can actually change it every service. So when you do your engine, when you change your engine oil, you can also change your air filter. It's not too expensive to, to actually replace it. Um, next um, slide. The next thing, um, changing your flat tires. Um, so when you have a blown out tire, what do you do? Um, find a safe place to pull out. You could be in your house when you have a deflated tire. What do you need to do? All of that. So if you are if you are on the road while or why this happened, first thing is to pull off the road, get a safe place to uh, park, turn on your flasher, your hazard flasher, get your caution sign, put it about um, hundred meters to your car so that you can alert other road users that you have an emergency on the roadside. Uh, next thing is to activate your parking brake, use a tire wedge to wedge um, the tire diagonal um, in the in the di di uh, opposite no, right, so adjacent to where you have a blown out tire. So if you have a blown out tire in the front uh, driver side, you need to wedge the tire um, at the back, at the right tire on the other back. So you so you wedge your tire di diagonally. Um, so you get your wheel spanner, your jack, and put out your extra tire. Can you move to the next slide? So get out your extra tire. Um, first thing you need, you need to slack um, the wheel locks. That's the wheel nut or the wheel bolts, either of the two. Um, place your jack underneath your car. So usually for, for every vehicle, so you there's a part where they put underneath the car where you're supposed to place the jack. Put your jack, wind it, then remove the tire, the wheel lugs. Um, the easiest way to actually remove your tire is to place your hand on nine o'clock and three o'clock. Uh, the, the, the picture above shows it, so it's easier for you to remove your tire. Remove, once you remove your tire, you, you replace it with your extra tire, fasten the wheel lugs back, then you wind your jack that you, you lower your jack and remove your jack and tighten the next slide, tighten the wheel locks back. It's as simple as that. Then the next thing is um, how to jumpstart your cars. A lot of, um, uh, you find that, so another thing you should have in your car as a, as a res responsible driver, you should have a jumpstart cable. So if you have, if, if at any point you have a low voltage in your batteries, and how do you um, jumpstart? You should identify the positive and uh, negative in your car. 
and if you are using another car or another battery to jump start um identify the negative and positive then connect the negative terminal in the bad in the low um bad battery to the negative on the good battery then you connect the positive also to the positive so with some cars there are um other connectors you can put your jump start instead of di direct instead of putting it directly on the battery edge so um sometimes you could to avoid battery blowout the battery can 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 actually be bad or maybe if you now connect from battery to battery you can blow out the battery so it's better to put it on the connectors that the that has been proposed that has been provided on the vehicle so you connect the negative on the connectors to the um, negative on the battery you want to jump start you could start the car to make it run on hydro for a while so that you can also charge your car then you start your car once you've started once the uh, the car with the low voltage battery has been connected um you can remove the jump start cable and the jumper cable and run it for about 13 minutes to charge up the battery um next slide next slide um uh, okay um dashboard warning lights um some people actually call it christmas lights on the dashboard we have a lot of lights on the dashboard um there are some that, that we are familiar with so this um uh so the first green one so i would um talk about it uh, from the top left to the right then the next line so the first one is um adaptive um control so what it does is when you are moving close to the next car in front of you it just shows you that you are moving too close then it alerts you in on this cruise control you can do that you can set your car at a particular speed for it to continue moving at that so cruise control the next one is lane assist when you're not so it tells you when you're moving out of your lane um the next one is your brake pedal so um with some cars that you need to start with your brake pedal the push to start car so that's the light that that, that comes on that tells you to press your pedal before you start the car the next one is the airbag light the red so i'm touching the next red light the airbag light so if you have this on your dashboard it's showing you that one of the airbags in your car is faulty um the next one is showing that your bonnet is open next one your boot is open um the next one is the brake warning light that's so on the second line by my uh, left brake warning light door open the second one is engine coolant so um engine coolant when you have this red so the third one on the second line when you have that one it shows that your temperature is high or something you need to park then the next one high pressure light maybe your oil pressure is low it could be it could be caused by low oil in your engine or probably your engine pump is failing and all of that the no, no engine pump oil pump in the engine is failing then the next one key uh, with some cars when you um, with some cars that uses um thumb starts push starts it alerts you when you're when you're leaving your key in your car or going out or when you need to put your key in your ignition then the next one is steering wheel for cars that use it uh, uses electric steering when you have this um sign on your car okay no so uh, when you have the red so when you have the the steering with a crossed um mark on it is showing that the steering pump is faulty then the next one is your seat belt is your seat belt um the third line on my right next one the steering with the key that the steering is locked you need to so sometimes i've had a customer call me to his house that his car is not starting all he needed to do was just to turn the steering the steering is locked when your steering is locked uh you're able to insert your key into the ignition it won't turn the ignition so you need to add so it's a form of security that some man manufacturer will provide for their cars you need to turn um the the steering a little bit for the key to for the ignition to open then the next one is the battery light well, well um, if you are driving and the battery light comes on it's an indication that um, the alternator is not charging your battery well. The next one is your headlamp lights. Um, the next one to the headlamp is an adaptive light. Um, next one 
um, air or suspension with some cars that using that, that uses a, a, a matrix of suspension it just shows you the level where your car is you could put it on low normal or high so it shows you the level where your car is the next one the yellow one it's the next one to that is the airbag light the wiper washer then the abs abs is anti-lock braking system what it does is to um with newer cars um when you apply your, your brake um there's a particular force that they actually sent through each of your wheel per part time not so that they don't lock at the same time if you apply your brake and all the wheel locks at the same time your, your car can can, can actually tum tumble so the job of the abs system is to send the amount of force that each will need part time and you notice that you know in in lagos in nigeria a lot of drivers actually drive with the abs warning light on it's not advisable for you to drive with your abs so if your abs light is on try and go to your te te technician to help you scan why it's on another reason why your abs light is on some cars um the the, the speed sensor so um the way the abs work it works alongside with the speed sensors on each wheels so it senses the speed on each wheel per time so when you apply your brake so um it sends a, a a a signal to the abs telling the what speed each tires and then it gives the amount of force it needs to stop part time so if your abs light is on it could be that your speed sensor is bad or probably the abs um pump itself is faulty or the module um next one the brake fluid monitor i love that a uh, brake fluid monitor engine lamp no so the next one is warning lights um on your on the fifth row the second one is traction light um usually with toyota's when your check engine light is on it turns off your traction so the traction has to do with tire the amount of force or friction it's attached to the uh, road um so whenever your check engine light is on you notice that um the the traction light is just before the check engine light so when your um check engine lights it on on it actually triggers the um the, the traction lights to go off like the traction of the car then the eps the eps actually works in some cars works with the um with the abs also once your abs is mama is mama fortunately it triggers the epc lights um the next one is um engine oil level once it's yellow so there are different um warning signs on your car you have the red the green and the yellow so the red is actually showing you that there is a danger that like there's danger yellow is showing you that you need to fix this thing like it's just going to be prompting you with yellow but whenever your warning sign turns red it's showing you that you need to actually stop your car um so next to the um high pressure lights that's the engine oil level you have your headlamp um lights then the key locks showing you that you have a key then the next one on the last line you have the um fuel gauge all of that then the next one is same thing with um your pedal so it's showing your pedal headlamp the next one is the headlamp then um on the last line the third uh, um the fifth one is also um it's called uh, parking assist so you could call it a parking assist or so when a car is moving close to you all of these senses that a car is close to you or with some newer models of cars when you are moving too close to a car it actually applies the brake on your behalf even before you press it be like it will apply the brake on your behalf and the next then the last one on that line is the tire pressure light so it shows so it pops up when your tire is under inflated or over inflated um next slide so we're done i'm done question and answer so at this point you can ask any question you have sorry do you have any questions okay maybe we are still trying to think uh, i have one question here before okay. we uh maybe. so my question is you talked about uh 
uh, the type of pressure uh, to feel in our car, in our tire, rather. So yeah. I want to ask that how can we know the right type pressure for our tire? How can we know the right uh, okay. measurement, like the pressure we need to feel our tire? Okay, so for um, each cars, um, there's a recommended tire pressure for each valve, for each valve elbow. So I said on the driver's door, by the frame of the driver's door, there's a plate that shows your tire pressure. So they write something like 32 PSI, 50 PSI, 40 PSI, or 210 KPI, like that. So that's where you find your tire pressure. Another way to know, on the tire itself, they usually imprint the tire pressure for each car. Like on the tire, on the body of the, like on the tire, you'll find it. So there's a, so they used to put the tire pressure for, uh, you're supposed to, the right tire pressure for that car, for that tire rather. Okay. Or you okay. can check your manual. It's always in the uh, manual okay. of the car. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Uh, please, do you have any questions for Engineer Kenny? Uh, please, we can all ask a question. We can use the button to raise up our hand. Then we can ask questions. Uh, we have like a few minutes now. There are timers anyway. Ask them. Okay. Uh, in the absence of none, I think that means it's all clear to every. Okay. Someone has a question now. Yeah. Good evening, ma. Good evening, sir. Ah, oh. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. My question goes this way. In the case that where you check your engine oil and you notice yes, you have an oil shortage on your vehicle, is it advisable to top the oil or to change the oil? So it depends on how low it is. So it's advisable to just top up. So if you're not so close to where your me mechanic is or who who whoever can change your oil, you need to actually top the oil before you go and replace the oil. So I think the first thing is to find out why your oil is going low. Usually, if your if your engine is in a good condition, it's not supposed to go low. It's either it's either that there's, there's a leakage somewhere, or probably the rings are worn out and the oil is burning with the fuel. So those are the reason why your oil will go low at any point. But if your oil is low and you need to actually con 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 to, to, you actually need, and you need to continue your journey, I think you need to top up your oil before you go and replace the oil. Okay, and you didn't answer your, your question well. Yes, you you did. But why I'm asking the question is, you know, there are some there are some engine hoy that that let me put it the way that that have different recommendation for different car, like five W twenty. Yes, five W thirty. Yes, ma'am. You know, in a case that where you use wrong hoy for wrong vehicle, it's possible to cause oil for it to dry up. Yes. Yes. So. Okay, I, I don't know if I failed, failed, failed to mention. Now, for each car also, you have the recommended oil. So most cars on the cap of the um, engine, like the, uh, the engine cap where you fill the engine, they usually put your recommended engine oil. So if you use the wrong one, it will dry up. So with that one, you need to top up. So now it depends on the situation that actually caused why the engine oil is low. So okay, that's why it's also recommended you use the right engine oil for your car, for the engine. So if you use a lighter v a lighter v viscosity oil, it will go low on time because it will dry up. Sorry so to if you have man. to use, Sorry, is okay, no problem. Is it advisable to use oil treatments? I actually do not recommend oil 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 treatments. It has actually damaged a lot of engine that I know about. I do not recommend oil treatments because you don't actually need to 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 treat your oil because in the engine oil that, that you are buying they've added other adhesives that your car needs so putting oil treatment you actually does the and those oil treatment they are actually very very thick like the viscosity is very high, high so by the time you put it in the engine that needs a very light viscosity to actually block all the channels that the oil is supposed to actually flow through with that, you will damage the engine more. Okay, ma. 
I'm okay. okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Rose, Engineer Rose. So the next person, uh, Mr. Samson, do you have a question? Engineer Samson or not? Yes, I have a question. Um, so, Kenny, you talked about um, to you. engine oil, um, um, like changing your engine oil after every 5,000 miles or every three months. Yes. Um, in, in a case where you have your, your car parked for a long time, and um, the oil is recently serviced. Well, it has been packed for a long time. So after picking the car up, before starting it or doing anything, do you have to still change your oil, or can we can we be assured the engine is still the oil is still in the same condition as you left it? That's my question. Okay. So I think um, packing your your car for a long, for for that long is actually not good for the engine because at some point. The um the oil the oil begin to to form sludge like it begin to thicken now with the weather weather change because when the car is parked there, um the effect of the environment will also be happen to the oil at some point the weather will be cold at some point the weather will be hot it will actually be changing the state of the oil, so I think when you park your car for a long time it is advisable to actually change the oil now when I mean park for a long time that means like parking your car for a year for seven months it actually you actually, actually need to now with newer models of cars even if you pack it it will still count the dates that you're supposed to service so it will not tell you whether your car is parked though or it will show you that car needs to be maintained did you get that yeah thank you okay thank you very much okay the next person uh sorry please take it uh very brief uh, for your questions, uh, Ms. Engineer Joshua Okafo, uh, you are the next person. Okay, uh, good evening, ma. Uh, my question goes this uh, way. Uh, I'm looking at a situation whereby, I don't know, just like I want to hear from your own opinion, how can this our car be environment friendly to us? It's such a way that we can actually have a green environment everywhere whenever our cars are running. So I think uh, with cars, uh, your catalyst, um, your catalyst, con no, catalytic, con con catalytic con converter is the right word. So in uh, Nigerian language, it's called catalyst, catalytic converter. Once you have it in place in your exhaust, it actually reduces the amount of toxic emission that actually comes to the environment. Um, then uh, with some cars, once your car is actually showing her on the that ash body, showing you that your car is environmental friend friendly. So you need to make sure that you have catalytic converters in your car and they are proper and they are working properly. And also make sure that your O2 sensors are working fine in your car. So that's the only way we can um, assist the environment. Um, did I answer your question well? Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, the last person uh, uh, should be Oluwa Femi. Over, over to you. Okay, good evening. Good evening. So, this um, may be a bit out of um, the um, those things we had today, but um, I, I recently took an exam, and in that exam, they asked that um, this and uh, when your vehicle is shooting, what is the yeah. cause? We regularly see it on um, damn fools when um, this Lagos bus, when they are moving on the way and they just whistle. Yes, sounds like pa, pa. Like, what's the cause? So it's caused by incomplete incom con con combustion. So the the combustion cycle is not complete. Probably you're having too much fuel in the system. So the air fuel rate ratio is not the same. So the air and fuel ratio getting into the, into the cylinder is no right so you are getting too much fuel into the cylinder that's why you have that shooting the combustion is incomplete did i yes yes sir? yes ma thank okay. you ma incomplete yeah, so combustion that's the reason why it's shooting yeah thank you very much uh thank you so much for the uh, so the last person here please uh kiemi george uh that should be the last person for today thank you very much everyone <laughs> So over to you, Mr. King Yemi. Yeah, good evening, good evening ma'am. Uh, my good question evening. is, uh, this is the Sienna 2005 model. 
most of them are for transportation. Okay. Huh? Yeah, they have to make service on the car, and on the long run, it was having thick exhaust, and it's a petrol engine. Supposed to be having a light petrol. Sorry, I'm, I, I, I can't hear you well. Can you call me again? Uh, I said, the year 2005 model. Yeah. The maintenance changing of oil was more than the normal was. It was taking like five months. Okay. And when they probably made the changing of the oil, it was having thick exhaust, like the exhaust fume was thick. Black thick film instead of it to black. be just light and black. I want to know so, what the cause of that. When you have black um exhaust, black smoke from your exhaust, it's showing that too much fuel Very. is burning in the combustion. That means the combustion is not correct. It could be caused by the air flow. Uh, so there's an air flow meter on the air uh, box. F if you get on the um, intake air intake box and air flow meter. If that air flow meter is not working well, you will not have the right amount of fuel and air in your system. When you have black smoke, it's showing that too much fuel is burning during the combustion. It's not it doesn't have to do with oil. If it's oil, it should be blue smoke. If oil is burning, I know so the total different smoke from exhaust they agree they, they they actually indicate different things when you have blue smoke it means that oil is burning so that means your rings are flat the um the piston ring is flat so oil is getting into the combustion chip and oil is burning that's why you have a blue smoke when you have black smoke it's showing that too much fuel is burning so you are burning too much fuel in the in the combustion system so it means that the airflow meter so what the airflow meter is just to time the amount of air and fuel that gets into the system at a time. Um, when you have white smoke, like thick white smoke, it means that um, your gasket is flat, flat, coolant is getting into the combustion chamber. Then you have um, coolant burning with your airflow mixture. So you said it's black. So you could check. So and I'm sure, so with that Sienna, if you check, it's likely that the check engine light is on. And if you run a, a, a diagnostic on it, you see that um, the F well, the F air mass. So it's called air flow meter, air mass. So air slash mass flow meter. That's what that sensor is called. It's likely that that sensor isn't working well. Did I answer your question? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining this evening. Thank you, uh, Engineer Kenny. Uh, this is a thank really, really impactful one. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the for the lecture and also for answering those questions. I'm sure at least every one of us were able to gain one or two things. I'm were able to gain one or two things today, and then also I'm sure this uh, we also record this uh, this uh, presentation, which can also. Uh, will also be shared on youtube so that we can also have access to it uh, as many people that is not around also as for us also to also listen to it again so thank you very much engineer kenny i uh, really appreciate thank you your, for having uh, me thank you